Helen, thank you for joining us on TVC News once again. A patrol leading tanker has exploded in Ibadan, leading, the, leading to the damage of uh, three vehicles and a motorcycle. The incident, which happened late Saturday, occurred at Yanoajia area of Ibadan. According to eyewitnesses, the tanker was attempted to navigate to the other side of the road when it hit a stone, causing a leakage. They revealed that as uh, people began scooping fuel from the spill, a spark ignited leading to the explosion. Fortunately, no lives were lost in, in the incident. Senior reporter Olaide Uiwale joins me for more on this incident. It's good to have you join us, uh, Olaide. Uh, what's been the immediate response to this incident? So, Olamide, residents and those who were affected by this incident are still trying to recover from the shock of um, the explosion that happened late last night. Um, from what I learned, uh, so this is um, this is the Anuajia, which is close to the border town between Oyo State and Osho State. So it happened yesterday. This is about 20 kilometers away from Iworo, which is, a, uh, which is um, Ibadan, the main part of Ibadan. So this road has two sections of uh, two, it has two sections. So while those who are going to Ife were trying to navigate their way through to the other section because there was a blockage at the other side last night. So they were trying to navigate their way through to the other side to cross to the other side and uh, go their ways. Uh, there was um, a, a petrol laden tanker, which you can see right behind me. It was part of those who were trying to navigate there. So what they just saw, those the eyewitnesses were that they saw that the tanker hit a stone. And this is the stone right uh, beside me. This is the stone right here. So while it hit the stone, there was a leakage. And um, I learned that the driver was also trying to block the leakage. But unfortunately, he could not do that. So people came down from the uh, various vehicle and started scooping fuel from um, from the leakage. So unfortunately there was um, an ignition, a fire ignited from behind one of the vehicles um, that I can if my cameraman can tilt to that way, um, this is a vehicle that was directly behind um, the laden tanker. So they just saw that a fire came from behind this vehicle and um, spread across. So but fortunately People had their way and they were able to escape um, from the incident. There was no live loss. So to this morning, um, to stop, I mean, to stop the traffic, they had to find a way to pull the vehicle, the um, the, the said vehicle, to, um, to the side of the road so that vehicles can pass and they can have their way to their various destinations. Olamide. All right. Uh, beyond the uh, eyewitnesses uh, report, have you also spoken to uh, emergency responders as to how this, you know, uh, incident has been, been managed in that sense, and perhaps a representative of the government to address this? All right. If you can hear me, I'm asking you if you have been able to, you know, speak to others. Uh, beyond the eyewitnesses, possibly a representative of the government or emergency responders? Also, we are yet to see um, government officials. Um, so we expected that uh, the Oyo State um, Transport Management Agency would have been yet this morning to, ev to evacuate these vehicles, but we are still expecting them. From what I heard, they've been contacted and, and we heard that they're on their way. But as I speak to you, we have not seen, but we can see there are, um, there is um, some security agencies are here. They are most helpful uh, to maintain peace and order here. So those are the ones you can only see around this place. So, so far, we don't, there is no government official here to address the issue, and they are still being inspected. Olamide. Senior reporter Olaide Oyewale, thank you for joining us on the news this hour. Well, moving on, the federal government is rolling out a large-scale recruitment drive into the Nigerian police force to encourage more youth involvement in strengthening national security. 
President Bola Tinubu said this during the graduation ceremony of 478 new officers from the Nigeria Police Academy in Kanu State. Speaking on behalf of the President, the Vice President Kashim Shatima highlighted the administration's commitment to equipping the Nigeria Police Force with modern tools and resources to help them do their jobs more effectively. The Vice President also urged the new graduates to uphold the highest standards of professional conduct as they begin their policing careers. It's a government, we are committed to sustainable growth. And we understand that the nation's development is directly tied to the strength of its institutions. For this reason, our administration remains steadfast in its effort to ensure that our police force is equipped with the necessary tools and training to protect and serve our citizens Meanwhile, the Director General of uh, the National, National, rather, National Youth Service Corps, uh, Brigadier General Y.D. Ahmed, has warned call members to avoid unnecessary journeys, especially at night, to ensure their safety. Brigadier General Ahmed made this statement during his visit to Yakubu the one NYC permanent orientation camp in Jigawa. The visit is part of his tour of NYC orientation camps across the country. He said efforts are underway to review core members' allowances following the adjustment of the national minimum wage. According to him, the discussions between NYSC officials and the federal government representatives have begun. He also emphasized the importance of security consciousness and encouraged core members to learn skills through uh, the SAED program to become self-employed. The DG further disclosed that NYC collaborates with financial institutions to provide core members with access to loans to start businesses. Let's continue in uh, the northern Nigeria where heavy rainfall has ravaged Gwadai community in Buji local government area of Jigawa State, leaving a trail of destruction and despair. Residents of the community who spoke to TVC News said the devastating Nair downpour submerged over 800 buildings, including schools, hospitals, markets, and homes. It said the disaster also affected over 1,000 farmlands, sparking fears of flood, food, and water. This development comes days after the State House of Assembly passed a reviewed 2024 appropriation bill, allocating over 16 billion naira to support flood victims, uh, agriculture, and also scholarship programs. The natives are calling into assistance. Heavy, uh, as you can see here, as a result of heavy rainfall, where houses, animals, uh, even mox is affected, so a lot of uh, a lot of accommodations, or most of uh, our our people, they leave their communities, uh, they leave their houses as a result of this flood affected this uh, uh, what a town.